Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. The Pope's Prayer Intention for February For We Men Who Are Victims of Violence Pope Francis' prayer intention for the month of February sends a powerful message against the various kinds of violence against women, which he describes as the degradation of all humanity. Pope Francis' message against the violence that millions of women suffer daily, psychological violence, verbal violence, physical violence, sexual violence. For Pope Francis, these abuses are acts of cowardice and a degradation of all humanity. Consequently, he asks us to pray for the victims, that they may be protected by society. Violence against women in numbers. It's shocking how many women are beaten, insulted, and raped, says the Holy Father. Indeed, the statistics compiled by United Nations Women, updated in November of 2020, are stunning its day. In his February message, the Pope asked for society to protect these victims, although at least 155 countries have approved domestic violence laws and 140 have legislation regarding workplace harassment, sexual harassment, to give two examples. This does not mean that these laws always conform with international norms and recommendations, nor that they are applied and enforced. We shall continue the Pope's Catechesis next Sunday. Oratio Imperata God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the coronavirus disease 2019 that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace, for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease, and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that may minister to the sick with competence and compassion government and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this pandemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. We also pray for all who died because of this disease. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsud, Pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Alex P. Montañez and Family, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Now Trucking Services, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Jardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Abilis, Quillan's Food House, Mr. and Ms. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Deason, Gus and Sophie, 
Mrs. Ampi Icasas and family, Adolfo and Malo Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and family, Fel Yamido and family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the Church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offerers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group, Captain Ireneo and Betty Malano and family, Albert and Abelina Capinda and family, A.V.Z. Coco Lumber, Engineer Ernesto and Linda Aguilar and family. Thanksgiving Intentions, Nida Tumalip, Anonymous, Elsa Garcia and family, Davao Security and Investigation Agency, Magdalena Cocam, Government Project Bidding, University of Mindanao, Romeo Sasso, Jennifer and Jurico Suelto. Good Health, Lita Montalban, Mercy Evangelista, Linda Aguilar, Ernesto Aguilar, Rea Aguilar, Ernest Patrick Aguilar, Ernest Michael Aguilar. Birthday Intentions 11th birthday of Jan Albert Capinda, Genevieve Gaite Antonio, Valerie Gaite Barker, Champ Antonio, Alice Ascona, Thelma Mercado, Father Richie Gamaya, Zenia Blang, Anna Farrell, Maluf Yap, Sophie Zuluaga, Pedro Borla. Special Intentions Safe Travel of Manuel Jose Gutierrez Safe Travel of Captain Reneo P. Malano and the officers and crew of MV Kuhai Safe Travel of Chief Mate Eribert E. Malano and Michael Polinar Recovery and Healing of Albert Jan Arenas, Romeo Sasso, Manuel Jose Gutierrez, Ruel Jose Gutierrez, Emil Sison, Pai Cadena Regina Cispedes, Arnel Famador, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Arias and Ben Batong, Ronaldo Ravor. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, Germain, Erlinda, Claudio, Velma, Marutas, Julio, Minandro Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto Sr., Manuel, Renerio Sr., Conrada, Domingo, Abraham Sr., Adelaida, Linda, Lourdes, Sofia, Antonio Cocam, Lourdes, Jose, Feliciano, Francisco, Loreto, Senforoso, Roberto, Marcelina, Elizabeth, Almacchio, Jose, Asnar, Faustina, Dionisio, Loreto, Dioscoro, Efigenia, Juanito, Benito, RJ, Tranquilino, Benilda, Grant, Ivan, Benedict, Jimmy, Ricardo, Hilda, Edgar, Remy, Nelson, Herminio Sr., Eugenio Sr., Estrella, Laurentino, Abner Apostol, Adelina, Benvenido, Marquisa, Agapito, Macario, Petra, Maria Paz, Ricardo, Sergia, Alberto, Sabas, Magdalena. Those who died of COVID-19, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the Sick Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace you gave us strength and help us in our weakness. In your mercy touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses, and restore their good health so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your, in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, in a world full of suffering and illnesses, 
Jesus was the most powerful total healer. His presence brought hope and salvation to all the afflicted, even as it meant defeat for the evil one. The healing journey, which began on the trail of the proclamation of the gospel 2,000 years ago, continues today in the whole world. Christ, the compassionate healer, continues his mission through the church and all the people of goodwill who care for the sick and the afflicted. Wherever human beings do their best to relieve the pains of their neighbor, Christ is present and active in them as instruments of his healing love. The presider of the Holy Mass is Father James Cervantes, MIC, Marian Congregation of the Immaculate Conception, Tugbuk, Davao City. The choir during this Mass is the FSP Choir, Pauline's TV Choir Chapel, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the Banquet of Love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. To the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all the needy here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. Let us pray for the grace to experience more deeply the mercy of Jesus, especially in this Holy Mass. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to be followed. Good 
we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Sufferings and frustrations are part and parcel of human life. Even good people suffer as the dramatic story of Job confirms. Unable to understand the cause of his trials, the poor man drew the pessimistic conclusions we read in today's passage. The first reading. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for a shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, where shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The Word of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the broken 
Praise the Lord, for He is good. Sing praise to our God, for He is gracious. It is fitting to praise Him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, and is the first of Israel He gathers. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the numbers of the stars. He calls each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To His wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly and wicked the cast of life ground. Here is a beautiful synthesis of how Saint Paul viewed his preaching and all that he did for the sake of the gospel. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me, if I do not preach it. If I do so unwillingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly then I have been entrusted with a stewardship, what then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The Word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. 
He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so today we have a very simple but very beautiful gospel. Many people were sick and they came to Jesus and they were healed. Many people were possessed with demons. Uh, they were brought to Jesus and Jesus drove them out, uh, the demons, and they were freed. And then the other town, you know, nearby villages, they also, they're looking for Jesus uh, to bring the sick, to bring those who are possessed, so that Jesus can heal them. Uh, Jesus is the divine physician. Jesus says, I came for the sick. Those who are well have no need of, of a physician. So Jesus is the divine doctor. And the people in the gospel, they knew that they can go to Jesus for healing. They can go to Jesus and Jesus will drive out the demons. Okay, so let us uh, fast forward to the present. You know, 2021. Uh, are there people who are sick in this time? A few? Many? Are there people who are affected by demons, possessed, influenced, obsessed by demons? Uh, maybe many, you know, especially with this pandemic. You know, I read a statistic, they said 95% uh, of all the people in the world have health problems. 95%. Uh, that's a lot. You know, you know how many people are in the world? You know the total population of the world is? I think the last I read, 7.8 billion people. 95% of 7.8 billion, that's roughly 7.4 billion people in the world have health problems. 7.4 billion people are sick. That's a lot of people. Can you count to 7.4 billion? How long will it take? Now would be a good time for Jesus to come, no? Now would be a very good time, a lot of people to heal, a lot of people to cure. You know, if Jesus were walking on the face of the earth at this time, would you go to Jesus? Would you go to Jesus for healing? You know, even Jesus healed this Simon's mother-in-law who was sick with a fever. Even few, usually people don't go to a doctor or hospital for fever, but Jesus even healed the fever. So would you go? If Jesus were around, you would go to for healing? Uh, you know what happened these days is that we had this pandemic, right? And so what happened? We, we closed a lot of places. No more schools, shopping centers, businesses. We also closed the churches. Right? We canceled the masses. No more masses. You cannot go. We canceled the uh, weddings, baptisms, confirmations, all the sacraments, all of the ordinary ways that you would go to Jesus. We closed them all. We made it difficult to go to Jesus. You know, in this time when there's so many people that are sick, we closed many avenues, you know, to go to Jesus. How can we go to Jesus now? Many 
churches are closed. Sometimes, in, in many in other countries, they still don't go to mass in the churches. You know, the Vatican has said, he said, as soon as possible, you know, as, as soon as the restrictions, uh, they allow it, we need to get people to go to mass in person so that they can go to Jesus, you know. Uh, but are there other ways to go to Jesus? You know, during the pandemic, during the, when people were locked down, people started to read their Bibles, which is very good, the Word of God. You know, are you reading your Bibles? You know, and when they would read the Bible, they would experience peace, especially when they reflect on the Psalms. You know, so they experience a lot of peace, reading the Word of God. Uh, also, people started to pray the rosaries. You know, you have the rosaries. They started to pray the rosaries. The rosary is another way we can go to Jesus, reflecting on his life, meditate on the mysteries of his life, the rosary. You know, the rosary is also very powerful for healing, believe it or not. You know, one time they brought a possessed man to St. Dominic. He, they said he had 15,000 demons, possessed with 15,000 demons. St. Dominic said, let us pray the rosary. And he encouraged all the people to pray the rosary. By the end of the rosary, this man was freed from all the demons. This is how powerful this rosary is. This rosary can be used for freedom, you know, for those who are struggling with addictions. Those who are oppressed, obsessed by demons, attacked by demons. This rosary, these little beads, you know. Uh, is there other ways to go to Jesus? Now I want to show you an image. Have you seen this image before? This is the image of divine mercy, image of Jesus. You know who wanted this image painted? Jesus. It was not Saint Faustina. Jesus wanted this image painted. He told Faustina, have an image painted the way you see me. And Faustina first painted the image in her heart, you know. And then Jesus asked, where is this image? I painted it in my heart, Lord. If you don't get this image painted, you'll be held responsible. So Faustina found an artist to paint this image. And then she wasn't happy. She said, Lord, it's not as beautiful as when I see you. And then the Lord said, it's not in the beauty of the paint or in the brush, but in my grace. Those who venerate my image will receive many graces. Those who venerate my image will receive victory over their enemies. So Jesus wanted this image to be an, a vessel of grace, a vessel of mercy. And we can go to Jesus in this image and experience healing, experience mercy. You know, I, I tell you a story, I think I told you before, this uh, man who has, was in a coma, in a car accident, the wife, she didn't have money to pay for the operation, and there was no guarantee the operation would help. So she got this image of divine mercy, she used this image to touch her husband, and she prayed, Jesus, I trust in you, please heal my husband. She prayed for three days. Third day, the husband woke up. You know? Because of this image, because of this woman who prayed with faith, because Jesus promised those who venerate this image will receive many graces. Do you use this image? Do you go to this image to, for Jesus' mercy? You can go to this image for healing. Really? Other people have done it? This image is powerful. Are there other ways we can go to Jesus? You know, prayer. Prayer is another way. Jesus says, those, <clears throat> whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. You know, we can pray in Jesus' name and Jesus will help us. True story again, a father and a son went to the movies to go watch a movie. And there were some scary parts in the movie and the son actually stopped breathing. And the father turned to the son and said, what? Uh, David, are you okay? David, wake up. And David wasn't moving. You know, David wasn't moving. And uh, what happened was that he started to shout. He's like, David, get up, David, wake up, David. And shaking his son. They turned on the lights in the theater. 
they stopped the movie. You know, and people were standing around looking at this man and his son. He's like, somebody help me, somebody call it up. And then someone came, he was a Christian, he said, Sir, can I, can I pray over your son? He's like, sure, sure, whatever, anything that you can do to help. And this man came, he laid his hands on David, on his chest. He said, in the name of Jesus, breathe. David took a breath. Uh, the ambulance came, they went to the hospital. David turned out to be fine, he was okay. No, but this man simply prayed, in the name of Jesus, breathe. You know how powerful praying is? In the name of Jesus? It's another way we can go to Jesus. By our prayer. Jesus, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. You know? And this time, I think... We close many churches and many things uh, because of fear, you know. We're scared to get sick. And of course, this is prudent. You know, we don't want to uh, risk getting ourselves infected. We don't want to spread the virus. Uh, but it was motivated mostly by fear, you know. When they... These people in the gospel went to Jesus uh, and they experienced healing. They experienced freedom from their possessions. Why? Why? What happened? How come they were healed when they went to Jesus? Because they went to Jesus with faith. They went to Jesus with faith. They really believe Jesus is going to heal them. They really believe Jesus is going to free them from the demons. You know, we are called to go to Jesus by faith. Remember the woman with the hemorrhage? She says, if I just touch the tassel of his cloak, I will be healed. And she touched it and she was healed. And then Jesus turned around, your woman, your faith has saved you. Remember the centurion, his daughter was sick. And Jesus says, I will go and, and go to your daughter. And the centurion said, no, no, no. Just say the word and she'll be healed. You know, he had faith, he believed. And then because of his faith, the daughter was healed at that very moment. And it was by faith. You know, when we pray the rosary, we pray the rosary with faith. When you, when you venerate the divine mercy image, you venerate with faith. You know, when you say, when you pray in Jesus' name, you pray it with faith. You have to have faith. It's not just having rosary. It's not just having the image and touching. It's not just saying Jesus' name. Many people say Jesus' name, but they don't experience healing. They don't say it in a good way. You know, you have to have faith. Faith. We are called to walk by faith according to St. Paul, right? Walk by faith. We come to Jesus by faith. So really, it doesn't matter if the churches are closed. It doesn't matter if they're not celebrating Mass in your church. There is still a way we can go to Jesus. Very simple way. The same way people went to Jesus 2,000 years ago. They came to Jesus with faith. And because of their faith, they experience healing. Because of their faith, they experience miracles. Because of their faith, they were saved. So with all of these problems happening, pandemic, you know, many people sick, 7.4 billion people are sick. We're also sick because of many other things. We lost our jobs. You know, we have a lot of problems in our families, problems in our relationships problems in the workplace, with all of the problems in our world. Do you know where to go? Do you know where to go? More importantly, do you have faith? Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have none again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who will be the Father and the Son, is the door and Lord of life, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us approach with confidence the throne of divine mercy and present our petitions to the Lord in the firm assurance that he will hear our prayer. Let us all say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the universal church who continues through the centuries the healing mission of Christ, May she do so with faithful generosity. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father and all those involved in the preaching of the good news, may they see the fruits of their ministry in the lives of their flocks. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses, and all other people who are involved in the healing ministry. May they see Jesus in their patients and treat them with reverent care. Let us pray. Lord, For all the sick and the aged, may they find in their relatives and the rest of the community the loving care that will enable them to bear their crosses with dignity and hope. Let us pray. Lord, For the members of our community, may we learn from Jesus to be patient with all and be full of zeal for the preaching of the good news. Let us pray. For all mankind, may the Holy Spirit instill in us respect for the sacredness of human life from the moment of conception until death, so that we may support all those who struggle to uphold this supreme value. Let us pray. For all the deceased brothers and sisters, may they be admitted to the joys of eternal life in heaven, especially the victims of COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's media mission. Through the mercy of God and the intercession of all the saints. Let us pray. Lord God, enable us to imitate Jesus, the man for others, who bends with compassion over those who suffer in any form. May we learn from him to be close to the brokenhearted and be for them instruments of your healing love. You who live and care forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out all our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy 
these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, o Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but let me say the word, my soul shall be in you. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the Spiritual Communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, Grant, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have ever felt hurt, anger, or envy toward an important woman in your life, mother, sister, or friend, this book is for you, exploring the emotional hurdles women face in their relationships, from trust and honesty to competition and envy. Joy Carroll reveals a simple truth, friendship is never simple. The Fabric of Friendship, a book written by Joy Carroll at uh, 100 pesos per copy. Available at the Pauline's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.